In evaluating the integral of dx divided by x cubed times square root of x squared minus 1, we're going to apply the method of trig substitution. In applying this method, let's say x is equal to secant of theta. Why is that? Because we see we have square root of, so because of square root of x squared minus 1. So dx is equal to secant theta tangent theta d theta. Let us start the substitution. This is the integral of wherever you see dx, you're going to write down secant theta tangent theta d theta divided by wherever you see x, you're going to use secant theta. So you have secant 2 power 3 of theta times square root of secant squared of theta minus 1. From pre-calculus, remember that secant squared of theta minus 1 is equal to tangent squared of theta. So this integral in terms can be written as you can simplify this as well or you can keep writing everything and then simplify at the end either is fine divided by secant to power 3 times square root of tangent squared of theta this in terms can be written as the integral of secant theta tangent theta d theta divided by secant to the third and square root of tangent squared is just tangent theta. So simplify this as much as you can. You can get rid of tangent theta and tangent theta. You're left with the integral of d theta divided by secant squared of theta. But what's the definition of secant? As you remember, secant of theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta. So cosine theta is 1 over secant theta, and cosine squared of theta is 1 over secant squared of theta. So this, in terms, can be written as the integral of cosine squared of theta d theta. Remember that from pre-calculus, if you have cosine squared of theta, it can be written as 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. So this integral is equal to the integral of 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2 d theta. You can separate this integral into the summation of two integrals. The integral of d theta divided by 2 plus the integral of cosine 2 theta divided by 2 d theta. The very first integral is easy to calculate. This is equal to theta divided by 2. But the second integral, we have to use a u sum. Let u be 2 theta, du becomes 2, d theta or d theta is du divided by 2. So the integral can be written as the integral of cosine of u. It already has a 2 on its denominator and for d theta, you're going to write down du divided by 2. So you end up with a 4 on the denominator. So this integral is equal to theta divided by 2 plus 1 fourth sine of u plus c. But what is u? u is equal to 2 theta that you need to substitute back here. So your integral so far is theta divided by 2 plus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta plus c. Let us go back to our original integral. 
This is the integral that we are working with. It has x in it. So we need to write, rewrite everything in terms of x. Remember, we used trig substitution. So since we know that x is equal to secant of theta, going back to our right triangle in Pythagorean theorem, if this is your theta, So when you have theta here, based on the definition, x is equal to secant theta. What's the meaning of that? It means that 1 over cosine theta is equal to x, or cosine theta is equal to 1 over x. So x is the hypotenuse. 1 is the adjacent. Now, how do you calculate the other leg? This is equal to square root of x squared minus 1. So since x is equal to secant theta, it means that theta is equal to arc secant of x. So we found the value for theta. Theta is arc secant of x. So, so far, we have the following. This is equal to arc secant of x divided by 2 plus 1 fourth, wherever you see sine 2x. Sine 2x can be written as, or sine 2 theta, or sine 2 alpha in general can be written as 2 sine theta cosine theta. So you have 2 sine theta cosine theta plus constant of integration at the end. So this guy can be written as arc secant of x divided by 2 plus that half. Well, I know cosine of theta is equal to 1 over x. So wherever I see cosine, I'm going to use 1 over x. What about sine then? Sine theta in terms can be written as, by definition, square root of x squared minus 1 divided by x. So you have two substitution here. Let me move this a little bit down here so we have enough space for the rest of it. So a half times sine theta times cosine theta. So you get square root of x squared minus 1 over x times 1 over x plus c. Simplify this as much as you can is equal to arc secant of x divided by 2 plus square root of x squared minus 1 over 2x squared plus c. That's how we evaluate the integral using trig substitution. So let us recap what we did. This is the integral of dx divided by x cubed times square root of x squared minus 1. We used the method of trig substitution here. Since we have square root of x squared minus 1, we decided to use trig substitution x equals to secant theta. So dx is equal to secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. We plug in dx and then x into the integral and simplify as much as we can. On the numerator, we end up with secant theta tangent theta. d theta on the denominator, you have secant cubed. And inside the radical, you have secant squared minus 1. But secant squared minus 1 is equal to tangent squared of theta. So wherever you see secant squared minus 1, you're going to use tangent squared. It helps you to get rid of square root. And then you simplify, getting rid of both tangent and the numerator and the denominator. You end up with d theta divided by secant squared. 
because we can simplify this fraction. It ends up with d theta divided by secant squared. So secant is 1 over cosine. So cosine is 1 over secant. Cosine squared is 1 over secant squared. So basically, this integral can be written in terms of cosine. You have cosine to power 2. From pre-calculus, we know that cosine squared is 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. Just substitute that here inside the integral. Separate your integral into two pieces, which makes it much more easier to calculate. But if you write your integral in terms of theta, it means that you're not done yet because everything must be written in terms of x. So we go back to the definition of x equals to secant theta. Theta is arc secant of x. And by definition of x equals to secant theta, it means that your x is 1 over cosine. It means that cosine is 1 over x. Now you can build your right triangle. You have the adjacent leg, which is 1, and the hypotenuse, which is x. So you can calculate the length, which is in front of theta. Why we need that? Because we need to write secant theta in terms of x. With all of these calculations, our integral becomes arc secant x divided by 2 plus square root of x squared minus 1 over 2x squared plus c.